Welcome back to Tux Traveler. Well, today we are going to do another brief build video. We're going to talk a little bit about the DC fuse box, how I have mine wired in. We'll show you all of the other components that surround it and talk briefly about them. Now, what's the importance of your DC fuse box? You want to make sure you never, ever, ever, ever tie anything directly to the battery that is not fused. Because if there is a short and your battery is not fused, you are looking at an explosion level event. Uh, you do not want your van to burn down. You don't want your RV to burn down. You don't want your storage shed to burn down if you're just doing an off-grid DC-DC approach. And so uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to go in there and talk about the DC fuse box. I'm going to show you all the other components surrounding that. And then in future videos, maybe we will narrow in on uh, something else um, <clears throat> that, that we are are going to look at there. So uh, let's go down and have a look at how my whole electrical system is set up. And then from there, we will talk about the uh, DC fuse box, how I have that wired in, and we'll go from there. All right, so down here is my main electrical cabinet. Of course, at the very, very bottom, we have our batteries. My battery is custom made. Um, you can purchase the individual cells. This is four, uh, excuse me, it's eight cells, and each one of these cells is 100 amp hours, 3.2 volts. I have them uh, put together in blocks, so paralleled in four blocks, and then those four blocks are series to make a single battery that's 200 amp hours at 12 volts. This runs over to the red block over here is the BMS. So that is a 200 amp BMS, so I can run 200 amps concurrently through the battery at any given time. Um, so then we see this is the black wire coming from our negative terminal, here's the positive, and this is the master battery shutoff that will shut off power to the entire system. All right, um, from here then, uh, we actually have another power shutoff valve over here. This is actually the shutoff valve for the solar panels. So if I need to manage anything with the charge controller or something might be going goofy with the battery, switch that guy off, it's gonna save your charge controller. And you can see right now that uh, my amperage are going up. I'm drawing in 17 amps off the sun right now. Back here is the DC fuse box. We'll get back to that in a bit. Over here is the DC-DC charger. This is my engine charger. Allows me to charge my batteries when the engine is running. And uh, I have a full video about the installation of that. We'll go ahead and link that video in here. This is a 30 amp con um, inverter, excuse me, converter. Um, so the converter takes a basic wall outlet and this is just a standard um, 110, um, uh, 110, um, uh, volt uh, line you can plug this into any any house anything on basically a 30 amp circuit and you can charge your batteries off of this so this is actually a 30 amp so if you actually measure the the uh, amperage coming out of here it's 30 amps to charge the batteries of course we have this fuse back here with a 40 amp fuse over here um, our battery itself, uh, we don't have a direct fuse on the battery because everything else is fused into there. Here, of course, is our inverter. This is a 1500 watt inverter. And uh, I did this one, I could actually go up to a 2000 watt inverter with the size of the BMS. Um, you don't, you want to match your, your wattage, divide your wattage of your, uh, inverter, um, by 10 and then that will tell you the maximum amount you can run through your BMS. So I could run up to a 2000 watt inverter with a 200 amp BMS, but I kept that a little bit on the low side. Of course, we have a fuse going from there and then we have another fuse that goes up into the DC fuse box. I will also mention on the roof of the van, there is a fuse that is going um, on the solar panels into the charge controller. That's a 40 amp. Uh, fuse and then there's one more big fuse block right here which is a uh, 40 amp fuse for the converter so that covers basically the electrical system but let's go up and have a look at our dc fuse box <clears throat> sorry for the noise there that's the uh door here all right so now we're going to come over here and let's have a brief look at our fuse box and what you'll notice in our fuse box is that uh, we have massive wires coming up. This is, uh, I think this is a, um, 
I think it's probably a two gauge wire, either a one or two gauge wire. It draws enough that uh, I can basically run a boatload of current through this guy. And the reason I have so much power coming through this is I have wired nearly every bit of computer systems and everything in this van to run off of 12 volt. You can see I'm actually using all of my circuits except one. I can put one more thing in this fuse box and all of the currents add up and uh, with the usage and thing, uh, it will actually add up just nicely. So I'm not really stressing the fuse box. Of course, your fuse box has individual fuses at each component. And uh, if you happen to have a short or a circuit or invariably what usually happens for me is I'm rewiring something and accidentally touch the wires and I blow a fuse. Um, I could pull the fuses out for the lines I'm working with, but eh, it's just easier to replace them. I have hundreds of these fuses on board. Um, so you usually buy these for more like nautical purposes and things. And so, um, I did the best I could with the labels that they gave us. Uh, we have the DC outlet I, at the very top. I think this is going to my refrigerator, which is a five amp. Um, we have the stereo that is actually going to my amplifier for my um, speakers and uh, VHF. My guess is VHF is going to my computer monitors. I can generally figure these out if I need to pretty quick. Uh, cabin lights goes to my main overhead lights up there. Um, I have no idea what the auxiliary is going to. Probably one of the uh, computer switches. I have a series of Raspberry Pis in here. Refrigerator, this of course, um, oh, you know what? Maybe that goes actually to my refrigerator. That's the DC. Okay, that's right. The DC outlet actually goes to the char bed charger and the mood lighting. We'll have your overhead lights. Um, I guess my overhead lights is probably overhead lights as well. So I can't remember exactly what I put everything at. Uh, light bar LED. That might be the mood lighting. Electronics, that's definitely gonna be computers. Exhaust valve is my furnace. So I have, um, exhaust valve? No, no, the blower is the furnace. I was gonna say, that, that, that's the 20 amp fuse. And the exhaust fan, oh, the exhaust fan is my, uh, my overhead roof vent. So the way you're gonna run your fuse box, you're gonna run your main uh, red line up from your positive terminal on your battery. You have your main ground control coming down on the opposite end. Mine just kind of loops right around here. It goes right down to the side of the charge controller and then back down into the negative terminal. And um, the positive line, of course, you're always going to be fusing your positive lines. So I have a positive fuse there and let me see what if I can spot down what size that is. That would be this one here. It might be a 40. No, it's probably not a 40. I don't know. It's probably maybe it's a 75 or it's 150. I think it's 150 actually. 150 amp fuse there, um, which is going to save any issue. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna run all your black commons across into the top block and it doesn't really matter exactly where they are as long as they're in one of the blocks on the side that your red line's coming through. And then you're gonna run your red lines uh, where they need to go. So these two here of course are going down to things like the uh, cat uh, box has one of them because I have a motion controller over there. The other one goes out to the heater and then these guys here will go down to um, the various uh, components and then either up or down depending on where we're going. Of course, all these wires run behind the walls uh, inside of things and that is basically how we are running the DC fuse box. So make sure you're always fusing everything and you always want to make sure you have extra fuses of everything on board. So I have tons of these fuses. Um, I also have um, some more of these block fuses here. I have another bag of these. So if those go out, the only one I don't have is I don't think I have a replacement for my MC4 fuse connector on the roof. I should probably order one of those at some point in time. And uh, I have an especially fuse inside the um, engine block. Uh, for the batteries, which is part of the van. I don't have those either, and I should probably get some of those. I will note the DC uh, DC charger is fused twice. This is the line that fused going into the battery, and there's another one in the battery compartment to fuse the power coming into here. So there is your information about running your uh, DC fuse box. Make sure you're never running anything directly to the battery. Make sure everything is well fused. 
Uh, multiple fuses is perfectly fine. You'll see I have things in the DC fuse box and then we also have the DC fuse box itself is fused to the battery as well. Make sure you're doing things like that. More fuses is always better and safer for your system. So hopefully that will help you out as you're planning your van or RV or off-grid living situation uh, to get everything running for DC. And I really like the DC power when I'm running off of batteries rather than converting to AC. Uh, so that's why I pretty much converted everything I have in here to DC using a variety of converters and switches and buck converters and things like that. Well, thanks for watching everybody and uh, we will see you guys a little bit further down the road.